Good morning. I'm sitting here on my tie bag, put on my micro spikes, and uh, yeah. So today is another day. We have still some snow left of the Mount Jacinto descent. Um, it is a 19 mile descent, which is pretty interesting. So we'll get to see if that involves switchbacks, snow, um, blowdowns, or anything like that. Um, I wanted to talk more about yesterday. I wanted to talk about yesterday, yesterday, but I was so tired. I was not able to. And so yesterday was pretty rough there. We were literally in snow probably 95% of the time, if not 98. Um, it was probably yesterday and the day before. I almost would say that yesterday was rougher than the day before. And... Um, what I wanted to say. Oh, and it just goes like, we can't really show like the really slanted, steep descent. It's really, really, really crazy. A few moments later. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't, I couldn't get my brain to function. Um, oh, so it really goes to show and it really, really demonstrate that the PCT is actually pretty dangerous, meaning like, Chap and I were saying that on the, oh, well, Chap was saying, not me, I was just listening, but Chap was saying how the PCT really is almost like life threatening versus on the AT, we never really felt that our life was in danger. That doesn't mean the AT isn't dangerous because for example, old spec, the ascent for me was really, really crazy. Mount Katahdin, definitely, I think you could um, die hiking up that thing but the PCT right here is really dangerous. And I just talked to a Swiss gentleman named David. And uh, I remember looking at Fireball yesterday and we heard a helicopter and it, apt and it actually happened to be a helicopter picking up another hiker who, who did fall and dislocated his shoulder. So kind of a dangerous little um, area right here. So let's go. I guess. I'm still on my Tyvek. I don't know. Okay, let's go. <laughs> He's already, and I'm still on the Tyvek. Okay, let's You're go. Fine. Hey. Okay, moving on. Yeah, all I got is right a stupid gym jacket. Oh, okay. Yeah. Took those spikes off, hoping no more snow, but we'll never know. But for now, we took them off. Putting our spikes back on just because we don't want to die for the last mile that we have left of snow. And it just looks a little bit, you know, with that blow down and everything, looks a little bit sketch. I don't know. I don't know if this shows, but that's pretty much what we've been similar, worse than what we've done yesterday. It doesn't show the steepness, but that's kind of what we were doing yesterday. Lots of this side stuff. Now well, that is a beautiful mountain. And we have a little bit more snow left. <laughs> but that is Big Bear, guys. A little look that's at... Big bear. Well, and then hope, that is Big Bear, she says. I hope Big Bear and wants to melt before we get to it. We are looking at this here valley. It's so nice so to see a valley. So correction, this is San Gordinio or Giordinio. I'm sure one of you subscribers is gonna correct me. And then I guess Big Bear is behind it according to Fireball. It's pretty. Wow, look at these. S some rocks. We can't get over how beautiful this is and like the different shades of the mountains, do you see? It's like a Bob Ross painting. I just keep saying that. It's so beautiful. More beauty. Slow pan for those that have requested slow panning. I know for the last two days, we didn't really say much or I didn't really say much, but our morale is completely different today. <laughs> no more snow. We're happy. Uh, <coughs> You know, that whole saying, don't quit on a bad day, really means it. I mean, I never thought about quitting the last two days. I mean, it was miserable and there was a lot of suffering. I was never th thinking about not doing the PCT, but like today is just so great, you know? It's like, woohoo! 
let's get it going. But then Chaps told me last night, guess what? We'll be in snow again in 30 miles. I was like, no. But hey, that's part of the trail. And we have something called Mission Creek coming up. It seems like something. I really don't know anything about it, but apparently it's something dangerous again. I don't know that it's dangerous. I think it's more um, uh, like hard, but not. more hard. Okay, so it's not dangerous, but more difficult. Okay. I may be wrong about that, but my impression was that it was just a pain, but it wasn't like, oh my gosh, we may die. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, something else to look forward to. But first things first, getting down the, this mountain, maybe doing, well, we'll definitely be doing a Nero, maybe a zero if we get all the way down today. But, you know, that always adds to the cost. But honestly, I personally feel like we deserve two <laughs> nights in a bed because our, our bodies really took a beating these last two days. I mean, I, most of you know me, I'm not in for trying to make it too dramatic and everything. I'm, you know, pretty, we're pretty resilient, uh, but it was, it was really rough. So, <sighs> but another good day. Uh, road crossing? Something crossing. Look, it's like a Manzanita tunnel, kind of like the rhododendron tunnel in the AT, but Manzanitas. One of my favorite things is when a bug flies into my eyeball. I just think it's so great to not be able to see or have your eye fluttering as you are going down a mountain. That's real fun. A little water source. It's like watered down chocolate milk. It's like milky. Oh my god. It's like we're in another country. Like, oh my god. needle pulling thread no so pretty much today is all switchbacks down the mountain and the heat has already said hello again and i am not complaining i am so happy to be on a snow free trail it's so nice i actually need to look at my far out because today we are going to reach 200 miles and then in addition to that we are going to walk by a beehive. <laughs> so yeah, there are some notes in Faro that say there is an aggressive beehive that likes to sting the hikers. And I saw some videos last year and there are some notes in there that people got already stung this year. So they are not happy that people walk by them. And I am just curious. Are bees really aggressive? I thought it was wasps and hornets that are aggressive. I always thought that bees are like sweet and loving and they only sting you when you threaten them and all that. So um, anybody who is really knowledgeable in bee information, I feel like why would they just randomly be like 
aggressive. It's almost like it, it probably wouldn't be a bee, right? I don't know. So we just had to, <laughs> we just took a water break and that took a little bit longer because we were trying to identify what we wanted to do, to do today. Um, the total downhill is like 19 miles and regardless of whether or how we were going to spend the night, it was going to be 19 miles between today and tomorrow. So it would either be hike about 15 and then stay at a camp and then Nero into town tomorrow because we do need to upload videos and uh, resupply. Our fuel got uh, reduced a lot more than we're used to. That's probably because of the elevation and the fuel cans are a little bit different than what we're used to as well, um, a different brand. Or we would just hike everything all the way down and then make tomorrow a zero. So mileage wise, it doesn't affect anything. And I wouldn't wanna do a zero if it affected the mileage. But whether we're doing 19 today or 19 total between today and tomorrow, the only big difference was, you know, the cost of the hotel room. And so, you know, we are hiking with hammer and uh, fireball. Fireball is a little bit contemplating to do something different. She might start hike out tomorrow. Uh, she's not really, it just depends on how she's hiking. You know, she could be, like like hiking less miles today and then do and then stay with us tomorrow or she's gonna hike all the miles today and then stay somewhere else and then hike out tomorrow but we're not gonna hike out tomorrow because we just have uh you know things to do and we want to rest our bodies a little bit also we are not really in a super rush to get to sierra just yet because of all that snow right the longer we take the more time there is for snow to dissolve. Well, we are at 200 miles, but I haven't seen a sign yet, which there might not be one, but I'm sure there has to be one. But we have reached 200 miles on the Pacific Crest Trail. Oh, I see a sign. I saw a sign and it opened up my eyes. I saw a sign. <laughs> it must be right here because I see Roadrunner. This is going to be a weird video. All right, there it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this off and sing. Are you waiting? Yeah. You think they can hear me? Just sing it. I would walk 200 miles and I would walk 200 more. Just to be the man to walk 400 miles and fall down at your door. That's it. I thought maybe they'd yell back, but no. Me. Now we're definitely past the 200 mile marker, but this looks like an almost official one right here. That's pretty neat. PCT, a little bit of a distance shot. Isn't that cool? That's super cool. Okay, point two from the beehive. River crossing. Oh my goodness, I think I just went by it. You could so hear it. And I'm like, don't look, don't look, because if they see you looking, they might notice you. <sighs> wow, that sounded really loud. That must be a really big beehive. <sighs> I just came across a rattlesnake. <sighs> it looked at me and rattled. And I'm going to wait for chat because I don't know how to get past there. Probably gone. I have chapped the snake wrestler. Try to see if we can get rid of that rattlesnake. We messaged about a ride and then she texted me about Good news we heard back from plus one. 
He's also heading down the mountain. He's all out of the snow now. So that should be cool. Well, I'll, we'll probably meet up with him tomorrow then. So that's nice. It's windy out here. I think we're finally off the mountain. Yes, I mean, still something, but that is the mountain and I am on the bottom. We have another four miles to I-10 and then it's zero day. Yeah, we, be, we, we might want to open the windows. We probably no, smell bad. No, yeah, no. <laughs>